On September 17, 1939, the Soviet Red Army invaded Poland from the east, while it was fighting Nazi Germany in the west. Following military operations, which lasted for the next 20 days, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union divided and annexed the whole territory of the Second Polish Republic, on October 6, 1939. Though the pre-history of the 1939 Polish-Soviet conflict dates back to the early 1920s, the war's actual foundation was laid only a few weeks before it began. The Soviet Union began strategic alliance negotiations with Britain and France in early 1939, many months before the invasion, to counter Nazi Germany's rapid militarization under Adolf Hitler. In August 1939, the Soviet Union made a proposal to the United Kingdom and France, of sending 120 army divisions, each with 19,000 troops, 16 cavalry divisions, thousands of heavy artillery pieces, tanks, and fighter aircraft and bombers, on Germany's frontiers. Because the Soviet Union did not share a border with Germany, this would practically mean the Red Army occupying the regions of Poland, which had previously been the site of the Polish-Soviet War in 1920s. However, the negotiations failed. For months, German authorities had been secretly passing hints to Soviet channels, implying that more favorable terms in a political agreement would be granted, than those offered by Britain and France. As a result of the rejection of the terms, Joseph Stalin pursued the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with Adolf Hitler, which was signed on August 23, 1939. A secret protocol of that pact, the details of which would not become public until 1990, outlined the division of the European continent into two spheres of influence, split between two totalitarian systems, that of Nazi Germany and Soviet Union. Latvia, Estonia, and Finland were initially included in the Soviet sphere. Poland would be partitioned by Germany and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union would control the territory east of the Pisa, Narev, Vistula, and San Rivers. The French and British military delegations urgently requested a meeting with Soviet military negotiator, Kliment Voroshilov, one day after the German-Soviet pact was inked. On August 25, Voroshilov stated that, in light of the new political scenario, there is no useful purpose in continuing the conversation. Britain and Poland, on the other hand, signed the British-Polish Mutual Assistance Pact on the same day, affirming Britain's commitment to defend and safeguard Poland's sovereignty and independence. On September 1, 1939, one week after the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed, German forces invaded Poland from the west, north, and south. Poland had anticipated the Nazi invasion, and had prepared for it. Polish forces progressively retreated to the southeast, towards the Romanian bridgehead, where they prepared for a long defense, and awaited reinforcement and relief from the French and British, but neither came to their rescue. Soon after, Nazi German authorities urged their Soviet counterparts to do their share, and attack Poland from the east, as agreed. Despite repeated discussions, between Molotov and Ambassador von der Schulenberg, the Soviet Union delayed the invasion of eastern Poland, due to events occurring in the Far East in relation to ongoing border disputes with Japan. The Soviet Union needed time to mobilize the Red Army, so they took advantage of the diplomatic benefit of waiting, until Poland had collapsed before attacking. With Poland's collapse looming, the first statements of a conflict with Poland surfaced in the Soviet press on September 14. The Molotov-Tojo Agreement, reached on 15 September, ended the undeclared war between the Soviet Union and the Empire of Japan at the battles of Khalkin Gol. A truce took effect on 16 September. On 17 September, Molotov delivered a declaration of war to the Polish ambassador in Moscow. Molotov said on public radio that all Soviet-Polish treaties had became void, 
that the Polish government had abandoned its people, and that the Polish state had practically ceased to exist. The Red Army crossed the Polish border on the same day. The Soviet government used the German invasion of Poland as a pretext to break its non-aggression pact with Poland, declaring the Polish state to be non-existent and claiming that it entered Polish territory to protect Ukrainian and Belarusian people, trapped in territory that had been illegally annexed by Poland. Poland was now stuck between two totalitarian behemoths, squeezed from both the east and the west. On two fronts, a Red Army force of seven field armies with a combined strength of 450,000 to 1 million troops, entered eastern Poland. The invasion on the Ukrainian front was headed by Marshal Semyon Tymoshenko, while the invasion on the Belarusian front was led by General Mikhail Kvalyov. Several Polish cities, including Dubno, Lutska, and Wilodzimierz peacefully welcomed the Red Army at the outbreak of hostilities, believing that it was marching on to face the Germans. The Polish army's general Julius Rommel, issued an unauthorized order to treat the Soviets as allies before it was too late. Instead of surrendering or negotiating a peace, the Polish government ordered that the forces leave Poland and reorganize in France. The day after the Soviet invasion had began, the Polish government withdrew into Romania. During the advance, Soviet units would meet their German counterparts from opposite directions. On September 17, Wehrmacht troops passed the Brest Fortress, which had been seized by the Soviet 29th Tank Brigade after the Battle of Burz Litewski, to the Soviet 29th Tank Brigade. On the 22nd of September, German General Heinz Guderian and Soviet Brigadier Semyon Krivoshein held a joint march in the town. The Soviet leadership declared that it was intervening to safeguard Ukrainians and Belarusians in eastern Poland, because the Polish state had collapsed, and it could no longer ensure the protection of its own population. At the end of September 1939, the German-Soviet Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation, and Demarcation was signed, which included a revision of the borders previously defined in the secret clause of the Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, confirming the division of Poland. It marked the beginning of a two-year occupation of Central Europe, by two totalitarian regimes. The Polish government relocated to Romania as a result of the Soviet invasion, dubbed, the Fourth Partition of Poland. The eastern borders were gradually depolonized, and the Polish population in the USSR annexed Polish regions was Sovietized. Hundreds of thousands of Poles were exiled to Siberia and other far-flung corners of the Soviet Union, with many never returning from the inhuman land. Stalin also wished to rid Poland of its intellectuals. The Soviet secret police, the NKVD, murdered nearly 20,000 Polish military officers, academics, doctors, attorneys, and clergy. Eastern Poland was occupied by Soviet forces until the summer of 1941, when Germany broke its earlier alliance with the Soviet Union and launched Operation Barbarossa, a surprise invasion of the Soviet Union. The area was occupied by the Germans, until it was recaptured by the Red Army in the summer of 1944. Due to agreements made by winning powers, in Tehran and Yalta conferences towards the end of the war, Poland was taken over by the Soviet communist regime for decades. A free and democratic Poland was not established until June 1989 following a bloodless revolution, that marked the end of communism in Poland. If you have enjoyed the video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.